Bonjour, French 2 students. Here is your Lesson 28 A and B teaching video. S'il vous plaît, ouvrez vos livres à la page 386. Lesson 28. Picnic. Melanie et Jean-Paul organisent un picnic ce week-end. Ils préparent la liste des invités. Qui vont-ils inviter? Tu connais Stephanie? Oui, je le, la connais. C'est une copine. Je l'invite au pique-nique? Bien sûr, invite-la. Et son cousin Frédéric, tu le connais? Oui, je le connais un peu. Je l'invite aussi? Non, ne l'invite pas, il est trop snob. Comment? Tu le trouves snob? Moi, je le trouve intelligent et sympathique. Et puis, il a une voiture et nous avons besoin d'une voiture pour transporter tout le monde. Mélanie, tu es géniale. C'est vrai, Frédéric n'est pas aussi snob que ça. Téléphonons lui tout de suite et invitons-le au pique-nique. So, working through this translation. Picnic. Melanie and Jean-Marc are organizing a picnic for this weekend. They are preparing the list of guests. Who are they going to invite? Do you know Stephanie? Yes, I know her. She's a friend. I'm going to, or are we, am I going to invite her to the picnic? Of course, invite her. And her cousin Frederick, do you know him? Yes, I know him a little. Am I going to invite him also? No, don't invite him. He is too much of a snob. What? You find him a snob? Me? I find him intelligent and nice. And also, he has a car, and we need a car to transport everyone. Melanie, you are brilliant. It's true. Frederick is not that snobbish. Call him right away and invite him to the picnic. All right, the note culturel on picnic français. Quand ils vont à la campagne, les Français adorent faire des pique-niques. Un pique-nique est un repas froid assez simple. Il y a généralement du poulet froid et des œufs d'œufs, et aussi du jambon, du saucisson ou du pâté pour les sandwiches. Quand on a l'équipement nécessaire, on peut aussi faire des grillades sur un barbecue. Comme désert, il y a des fruits bananes, oranges, pommes, poires, raisins. Comme boisson, il y a de l'eau minérale, des sodas et des jus de fruits. So, a French picnic. When they go to the country, the French love to have picnics. A picnic is a rather simple cold meal. There's generally cold chicken and hard-boiled eggs and also some ham, some salami, or some pâté for the sandwiches. When one has the necessary equipment, one can also uh, make grilled meat on a barbecue. For dessert, there is, there's fruit, bananas, oranges, Apples, pears, grapes. For drinks, there is mineral water, sodas, and fruit juice. And underneath there, they have, the French have created dozens of varieties of pâté, ranging from the expensive and refined foie gras, made from the livers of fat and geese, to the everyday pâté de campagne, a type of cold meatloaf served in thin slices with bread. So, in this lesson, we have another irregular verb to learn. Le verb connaître. Note the forms of the irregular verb connaître to know. 
So we have connaître, je connais Stephanie, tu connais son cousin, il, elle, on connaît ses garçons, nous connaissons Paris, vous connaissez Montréal, elle connaisse ce café. And then the passé composé, j'ai connu ton frère pendant les vacances. So, s'il vous plaît, répétez connaître, connaître, je connais, je connais, tu connais, tu connais, il connaît, elle connaît, nous connaissons, nous connaissons. Vous connaissez, vous connaissez, ils connaissent, elles connaissent, connu, connu. And the little um, arrow there says, in the passé composé, connaître means to meet for the first time. So working through the translation of these sentences, I know Stephanie. Do you know her cousin? He, she, or one knows these boys. We know Paris. Do you know Montreal? They know this cafe. And I met, for the first time, your brother during vacation. The French use connaître to say that they know or are acquainted with people or places. To say that they know information, they use je sais and tu sais. Compare, for people or places, je connais Eric, je sais où il habite. Tu connais Frédéric, tu sais à quelle heure il vient. Je connais un bon restaurant, je sais qu'il est près du théâtre. So, I know Eric. I know where he lives. You know Frederick. Do you know at what time he's coming? I know a good restaurant. I know that it is near the theater. So again, um, we're not you learning all of this verb that means to know information, just the je and the two forms of it. So let's take a look at exercise 1. On ne peut pas tout connaître. Les personnes suivantes connaissent la première personne ou la première chose entre parenthèses. Elles ne connaissent pas la deuxième. One cannot know everything. The following people know the first person or the first thing in parentheses. They do not know the second. So basically, your first sentence is going to be affirmative. And your second sentence will be negative. And again, that means it's going to have a n, the verb, and pa in the sentence. So look at the example. We have Philippe, Isabelle, and Saucer. So we're going to say, Philippe connaît Isabelle. Il ne connaît pas sa soeur. So I'd like you to say those two sentences. Numéro un. Nous connaissons Paul. Nous ne connaissons pas ses copains. De. Vous connaissez le prof d'anglais. Vous ne connaissez pas le prof de maths. Toi. Je connais les voisins. Je ne connais pas leurs amis. Quatre. Tu connais Paris. Tu ne connais pas Bordeaux. Cinq. Les touristes connaissent le Louvre, ils ne connaissent pas le Musée d'Orsay. 
sis. Mon copain connaît ce café, il ne connaît pas ce restaurant. B. Les pronoms complément le, la, les. In the questions below, the nouns in heavy type follow the verb directly. They are the direct objects of the verb. Note the forms and position of the direct object pronouns, which are used to replace those nouns in the answers. So remember a direct object answers who or what of the verb. So to conne Eri, who do you know? Eric. So this is a direct object. Okay. Um, je, oui, je le connais. Yes, I know him. Je l'invite souvent. I often invite him. Tu connais Stephanie? Oui, je la connais. Je l'invite aussi. Tu connais mes copains? Je les connais bien. Je les invite. Tu connais mes amis? Je les connais aussi. Je les invite souvent. So again, here we have masculine and singular, right? Here's feminine and singular. Mes copains is masculine and plural. And mes amis is feminine and plural. And basically what they're saying is, just like in English, right, we wouldn't say, do you know Eric, and then say, yes, I know Eric. We'd say, yes, I know him. So they're showing you and teaching you how to say that in French. So the forms and uses, these are called direct object pronouns. And direct object pronouns have the four following forms. The masculine singular is le. Feminine singular is la, and again, they both become L apostrophe before a vowel or a silent H, and then the plural is lay, and they have the it here because it's not always a person, right? It could be answering the question what instead of who, and so it could mean it. The direct object pronouns le, la, L apostrophe, lay can refer to either people or things. Tu vois Nicole? Oui, je la vois. So do you see Nicole? Yes, I see her. Tu vois ma voiture? Oui, je la vois. Do you see my car? Yes, I see it. Notice these sentences are identical, right? The difference is I have to know what they were replacing in the sentence. Tu comprends le professeur? Oui, je le comprends. Tu comprends ce mot? Oui, je le comprends. So, do you understand the teacher? Yes, I understand him. Do you understand this word? Yes, I understand it. So, again, you have to be careful when you're translating because le and la as direct object pronouns can mean him, her, or it. Position. Direct object pronouns generally come before the noun according to the following patterns. Again, affirmative, we have our subject, our direct object pronoun, and then our verb. Okay? So, um, and then over here, notice our direct object pronoun comes between the n and the pa. Okay, before the verb again. So the first one is Eric. So we're asking about Eric. So je le connais bien. I know him well. Tu ne le connais pas. You don't know him. And then c'est fille, so feminine and plural. Nous les invitons. We are inviting them. Vous ne les invitez pas. You are not going to, you're not inviting them. Okay, so again, we see our direct object pronoun goes right before our verb, whether we're talking about an affirmative sentence or a negative sentence. So let's take a look at exercise 4, un choix difficile. Vous allez passer un mois de, or, yeah, le mois de juillet en France. Vous êtes limité à 20 kilos de bagages. 
un camarade demande si vous allez prendre les choses suivantes, répondez affirmativement ou négativement. So, a difficult choice. You're going to spend the month of July in France. You are limited to 20 kilos of bags. A friend asks if you are going to take the following things. Respond affirmatively or negatively. So you can't take all of these things. Some of them are going to have to be negative. You have to decide which of these you would not take. I'm going to ask the question and ask you to give the answer. So the prompt we see, ta raquette. So we have tu prends ta raquette. So if you're planning to take your tennis racket, you would say, oui, je la prends. And it's la because raquette is feminine. Or no, je ne la prends pas. If our noun is masculine and singular, then we're going to use le. And then if it's plural, if our noun is plural, we're going to use le. Again, parts of this stay the same. If you are going to say yes, it's going to be oui, je, and prong every time. And if you're going to say no, it's going to be no, je, ne, and then prong, pa every time. So, taking a look at number one. Tu prong te sere. Oui, je les prends, or no, je ne les prends pas. De ton livre de français. Tu prends ton livre de français? Oui, je le prends, no, je ne le prends pas. Toi, tu prends ta guitare? Oui, je la prends. No, je ne la prends pas. Cat, tu prends ton balladeur? Oui, je le prends. No, je ne le prends pas. Cinq, tu prends ta chaîne hifi? Oui, je la prends. No, je ne la prends pas. Six, tu prends ton maillot de bain? Oui, je le prends. No, je ne le prends pas. Sept, tu prends ton skate? Oui, je le prends. No, je ne le prends pas. Huit, tu prends tes t-shirts? Oui, je les prends. No, je ne les prends pas. Oui, tu prends tes sandales? Oui, je les prends. No, je ne les prends pas. So your homework, exercise one, we did this one out loud. Right, this is where the first sentence was affirmative and the second sentence was negative using the conjugations of the verb conetra. So, for example, number one, I want you to write both sentences. For number one, you'd write new connaissance. Oops, sorry. Paul. And then new, ne, connaissons, pas, ses copains. So we know Paul, we do not know his friends. So you're writing those sentences out for the six of those. For extra C scat, we also did this one out loud. You do not have to write the question. You're only going to write the answer. And some of them need to be negative. So um, if it was me, I wouldn't take my CDs. So I would write no, je, ne, les, 
Clone. Oops. Clone. Ah. So it's up to you. Um, you can choose whether you would or would not take these items. Au revoir. À demain.